today I'm going to share with you how we found out that our bottle baby had an infection and what we did to fix it. So something weird happened in the afternoon feeding of the bottle. The boys came back in from giving the bottle babies their bottle and said that Damsel didn't finish her bottle. Now, if you guys know anything about bottle baby goats, they're obsessed with the bottle whether whether they need it or not. It is like insane how much they love their bottle. So I immediately felt a sense of dread and knew something had to be wrong. I had not noticed anything wrong. I had just given her a bottle that morning. She seemed fine, but luckily we caught it early because the boys were aware that somebody was acting off. It's really important that you follow that gut instinct. When I went out to check on her at first, I was like, I don't, I don't understand why, why didn't you finish your bottle? And I handed it to her and she gobbled it up and I was like, okay, that's weird. But then I, you know, gave her a full body inspection. Now her disbudding site looked shiny. There did appear to be some ooze that had dried up. That can happen, especially only three days after the disbudding. It's very normal to see a little bit of weeping every once in a while. But this was completely coating her disbudding site. So I started poking at it, making sure it was okay. And that's when I noticed that it was still oozing and it had a foul smell. So I immediately took her temperature. She had a fever. I gave her ibuprofen and antibiotics right away. Then I, I knew that I had to scrub these wounds vigorously. <laughs> what is it? You want your bottle? You want your bottle? I'm going to give you your bottle after I get your scalp all clean, okay? So, little damsel here has irritated her disbudding site to the point where I'm seeing some um, yucky white fluid coming out where she kept on rubbing it. She keeps messing with it, so I'm going to mess with it now. Get it really, really, really clean. Put iodine on it. Um, we already gave her some ibuprofen and antibiotics. And we're just going to make sure that we stay on top of this infection and knock it out real fast. But that's going to mean I have to clean her head really good. Which isn't going to be fun for her or me. I won't video it, don't worry. And so I did, with some soap, a nail brush, some betadine. I used everything antiseptic. Um, Ryan had already given her an antiseptic wound wash, but he only did it with a paper towel because he didn't see anything wrong. So I think it was just beginning and we caught it right in time. What are you doing? And as you can see, she still loves me. She wants to get to me, even though I had to really scrub her wounds. The pus is smelly and her temperature is high. So that's why we went ahead and did the antibiotics. We try not to use antibiotics unless there is an infection confirmed. And a fever and stinky pus confirms infection. So we take steps that we need to look at her she's still trying to pick at it so hopefully she doesn't make it worse again I will clean it again in the morning twice a day at least Ugh, she's gonna mess it up tonight isn't she rub it on your sister is that how you itch it I don't know why hers is itchy I've never seen one itch so much it's all I can do it's just doing best I can and uh, everything I've done is what I'm supposed to do so hopefully it'll get better fast <laughs> and as you can see she is doing just fine playing bouncing happy baby so you see it's always important to be hyper vigilant and observe these babies very good every feeding 
just one feeding can make all the difference in catching something early, being able to treat it, or having an animal go downhill in between bottles. That's as fast as it can happen with these little ones. So stay on top of it, trust your gut, and hopefully this video helps you if you ever have this problem.